Hey up guys, what's going on and welcome back to York City. I've played through basically the entirety of September and this fixture has arisen as a result of our progression in the Carabao Cup. I'll get to that shortly. After beating Gillingham 4-1 away in the previous episode, we immediately lost to Sunderland 2-1 and Walsall 1-0. We took the lead against Sunderland and at that point I was kind of wondering, have I slightly underestimated the quality of my side here? And then we lost to them in the end. So. At that point, I'm thinking, this makes more sense. Lost away at Warsaw. Again, sort of thinking, maybe we found our level here. You know, got one win out of three. Fine. Crew in Carabao Cup are the same division as us. They are in League One as well. 3 0. Nacelle, Edgar, and Genie on that score sheet. And then, sort of old rivals, Notts County. Of course, we fought them in the FA Trophy once upon a time. Now we meet in League One. How both of us have risen since then, I guess. But. We did lose to them, I think, both times when we were both in League 2 as well, last uh, the season before last. Beat them 3-1. So that was kind of nice. Dean, Litau, Nacelle on that one. DK and a player I'm going to get to in a moment on the score sheet against Doncaster. And then 4-0 Blackpool is another player. Dan Morgan, Litau and Richie Dean getting on that score sheet. He's scored twice this season already. I think that's far more than he's done previously. Litau scoring, Dan Morgan scoring his second goal of the season in that one. Not quite as on fire as he was last year so far. Letal, though, continuing his fine form. Now, there's a couple of names in that list that I do need to bring you up to date on. And we'll work backwards on this one. Ignore the comparison thing on the right-hand side, because for some reason it thinks he's m most of all a right winger. Don't know why, when his only full green circle is central midfield. Explain that one to me. But these stats are very, very good for the Mazala attack. Now, the player that we do really actually need to compare him to, opposed to any of those players on there, is DK, who isn't all that bad, in fairness, but Sabara is a big step up, and in terms of comparison to Suarez, who is the backup to DK originally, he's gone out alone as a result of this. I think so, uh, I think Sabara is a step up, just slightly fractioning those technicals in the bits that kind of really matter, only lacking on really long shots, free kick taking and penalty taking, and we can have other people in that regard. Physically, Sabara's a lot better. Mentally though, uh, DK is actually edging most of the mentals. And if I do go on to DK thing, the part of DK's problem here is the fact he doesn't really have a lot of development space, so he is basically stuck at two and a half star. The bar though does have a little bit more space to grow into and he's a three star already and a good player for most League One sides. Whereas DK is regarded as League Two. So we now have a League One player in that Mazzaro attack role with a League Two backup. Not quite sure where Su uh, Suarez lined up on that list actually, but Never mind. The second of those names, or the first one in the order I actually ran through the games in, at the very least, was Taylor Gardner Hickman, who is on loan from Norwich. He's got a West Brom pitcher, and I'm not sure where he actually starts this save at, because he's at West Brom 1819, then he was at Dagenham and Redbridge in the 1920 season, and then Rangers have him from 2020 onwards. Norwich had just picked him up for 8 million, just over 8 million, which seems quite a lot of money for a player. With these stats. Now he does have 19 determination, so I suspect he will reach that potentially four and a half stars worth of quality. That's four and a half stars worth of quality compared to our team. That said, he's operating at a championship level, so this is a ridiculous coup on loan. We even offered less wages than they were demanding, and they accepted it. He's here for £1,600 per week, which doesn't even put him on par with our highest earners. Got the development room, of course. But 14 crossing, uh, 15 crossing, 14 dribbling, first touch, great. Technique's not brilliant, off the ball's not brilliant. But great physicals, work rate's fine, passing's fine. First ball, very strong right foot. He's our inside forward for the left-hand side. That's what's happened there. He's all the way over there on that left-hand side. Litau and Eversbach kind of deal with the right-hand side. Everything's fine and dandy. And then I've saved the best till last. I'm not quite sure how we've got away with this. Yes, we're paying quite a fair bit for him per week, but... With the promotion wage rises, actually, he's still not our highest owner. Our highest owner is Lopez. And as much as I love the guy, and as much as we have sentimentality, I would not be overly sad if we'd lost Lopez and his £3,000 per week before the transfer window shuts in a couple of days. However, that said, I tried to get a homegrown right back in. It wasn't really the options there. However, Vokins appeared on my list for left back. And I was th thinking, well, in that case, we'll make Shanahan the backup at right back, primarily. So we've got Clark and Shanahan on the right, and then we've got 
Feist Hamill and Vokins on the left now. Of course, Vokins is very much first choice at this point. I don't need to say much about this. Basically, every stat on this page is second, uh, second tier or higher. There's a few at the top of his mentors, jumping reach and long shots. In the third tier of colouring and his heading and flair are... Well, we don't talk about his flair, but everything else is 10 or higher, which is ridiculous. And the things that matter, tackling is 12, marking is 13, first touch and going forward, 12s and 13s too. Physicals, brilliant as well. Good, a good player for most ch championship sides. He's in the League One. Unsurprisingly, he's the best left back in this division. And we've got him for £2,700 per week, which I think is good for this. Also, there's a little bit of sentimentality with Jake Vokings because I signed him on loan first season I was with Bradford in my previous save. I'm pretty certain. Of course, he's a lot. He was a lot, lot younger then, and not quite as developed as this, and actually fit le fit League One a lot better at that point. But welcome back, technically, to the channel, Jake Vokins. However, you're not going to see him today because he's on loan from the club that we play. Of course, it's happened again, guys. Um, obviously, last year we played West Ham in the FA Cup where we couldn't play the one player we had on loan because he was on loan from them. Now we can't play our best player because he's on loan from our Carabao Cup opponents. That said, they've played three games recently and they've lost all three. So, wait, hang on. Well, that might be friendlies. Yes, they're friendlies. I thought they were in Europe for a second there. That confused me. But their Premier League campaign hasn't started particularly well. They might want a left back back. That said, we are away at St. Mary, so I am not going attacking for the first time in about three years. No, since West Ham, I think, maybe, is the only time I've done that. Now, of course, this is FA Cup, so all restrictions are off on that front. Vice Town does edge Shao Nan in terms of left back, so I am going to put him in on that one. I am going to bring him back to full back, which he is slightly more competent at rather than the complete one. One thing I do like, do like about... Uh, Vokins is the fact he is pretty good at the complete as well, so that works out quite nicely. We basically get to play full strength apart from Vokins, and that means we have at this stage Dutra in goal, of course, kept three or four clean sheets out of the last uh, four or five games. Not bad now. Feistamel, Borges, and Edgar in here. Clark, Dean in the Dean's in the defensive midfield row, of course, Nacelle and Sabara in the Mazala. Didn't realise that sort of vaguely rhymed. Gardner Hickman on the left. Might have to rename him because it's a long name. Lee Tao on the right. What's his first name? Taylor. Morgan up front, who, like I say, doing two goals. Lee Tao's on four already. Nacelle's on three. He's had a... Well, his average rating for the season is 8.58. So, continuing last year's form. And Hickman's form so far is above an eight as well. Lots of, lots of good things to talk about. In fact, our entire first team's rating is above a seven at this stage. Vokings included in that one because Feistamel hasn't played a game, I don't think, yet. Or started the game. Maybe he started the first game. Can't remember if I started him or Shao Nan now. But I'll just have to sort out the bench now because I can put whomever I like. Oh, by the way, yeah, F I know it's Carabao Cup, so if this for some reason goes to penalties, I do want Maralongo on the bench. Now, because I don't really need the home ground, I mean, Lopez in there. And don't really need Tavares because Smallwood can always come in in the defensive midfield and we can always push Dean back if we need a centre-back in the middle of the game. Vice Tamil can also move inwards and Shaunan can come on. We've got options for a centre-back without needing Tavares for this one. So two strikers on the bench, one for the actual game really and one for penalty taking if it comes to that. And of course other penalty takers on the bench who are pretty good. DK, Illich, Suarez has gone on loan so we don't have him anymore for that. But Smallwood is not too shabby in the old penalty front either of course. So submit this team. Passionately say we're the underdogs, this caused an upset. There is something I do need to show you in regards to League One afterwards, but I might as well talk you through it. 4 0 away at Blackpool and the results before that may seem impressive, but those three teams we beat in the league, Lost County, Doncaster, and Blackpool, are all in the bottom five. So we won't we'll get ahead of ourselves. Gillingham are down there as well, of course, the other team we've beaten so far in the division. So, like I say, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have had some good results, and I do need to show you that Blackpool game in more detail. But so far, this game has been scintillating. They've gained William Carvalho at some point. Remember when, remember he was when the remember when he was the like the the hot transfer that never appeared for anyone. Robert Rojas has scored though. Don't recognise him. He's not a low number. I suspect he's a defender. Well, that's whipped in quite nicely from Redmond on the corner. He's got the ball back. Just punts it back in, and well, no one's really there to deal with that. Simple goal. Uh, he's at River Plate, which would make sense. He's pretty good, actually. Just good, just checking out. Yes, he is. Sporting's William Carvalho, who's gone to Real Haspalas via 
Juventus to Southampton. That's a career. Um, yeah, because he was at Sporting for ages and everyone was sort of sniffing around him. And then he sort of stayed at Sporting and he's gone to Real Hispalis in real life. And then none of the, none of the big, big teams ended up with him. But stats-wise, really probably should have been. He's sort of like the, the Fernandes of his time. Any of the Fernandeses, they're all considered the same at this point in time. Danny Ings, though. Redmond's at the back post. He's headed it forwards, somehow, from our perspective. Throwing, though. I think this is the resulting throwing from that chance, actually. Walker Peters. Yes, that, that, that is a case of art mimicking life, I've just realised. But anyway, Loftus-Cheek. Well, he's put number seven through, and Scott Olsen has smashed that in. And why do I recognise his name? It took forever for that highlight to actually appear in 3D. Just wanted to see all the celebrations in 2D for about five minutes there, apparently. Oh, they they've got Loftus-Cheek as well. Former Burnley player, streamwise, personally. And we're going to see this with lines, because apparently that's important. Yeah, he's onside. That was obvious. Otherwise, the goal wouldn't have stood. Don't know why we need to see that. He smashed that in, in fairness. Uh, FC Nordjylan, Bologna, maybe gone there in real life. I have a feeling I scouted him for with Burnley on last year's game. I'm not sure if I scouted or... So no, I don't think I signed him, but I'm very certain he was on my radar at some point during that save. And so far, 2-0 down, but not really putting in a bad shift. Three shots on target out of five. 57% possession. But we're struggling for possession in their half, apparently. Got well, some green from this team talk. It's not brilliant, but we shall continue. I will demand more. It is a cup game, so there's no real difference between losing 2-0 and 4-0. We'll go positive. We might just ramp this up a little bit as time goes on and we get more desperate. Maserari, though, who I'm very certain is a fairly handy prospect in this year's game. Oh, Garner Hitman's nabbed that off. Also now a Premier League player on loan with us. Uh, Norwich got promoted, of course. Garner Hickman. Still going, still going. No one wants to tackle him. What has gone on it? They've got Areola in goal. Didn't even register the fact they have Areola in goal. Pretty certain I sniffed around him in my Southampton stream save. First time I've decided to plug that whilst playing Southampton. Can't believe I've not mentioned that. Uh, I've sort of been off it a little bit the last couple of weeks just while I deal with some things personally. So not really had the time to do the streaming. But I will aim to be back on this. Well, actually tonight as this is. Hopefully. So keep an eye on twitch.tv forward slash amazing chi as of this Wednesday night. Because I should be on unless obviously things arise. So Clark coming inwards here. Still coming inwards. Garda Hick was at the back post. Doesn't beat Ariola. Beats the entire goal. So we'll go attacking. Which does, does seem to get the most out of our team. Now Garda Hickman is on a 6.1. It's not brilliant from him. I haven't put Genie on the bench. He's a good penalty taker. That was a mistake on my part. I shouldn't have put Ebbers back on the bench. I should have had Genie instead of him because Illich can cover the right-hand side. But DK is an improvement on Sabara, maybe. Not right now, but maybe. Dan Morgan and Smallwood have exactly the same penalty taking. So it's not really an improvement either way. But we'll get Marilongo on to lead the line. First time you're seeing him, by the way. I did it in the um, previous Carabao Cup game as well. I did exactly the same thing. Brought him on later on. Nothing is occurring. I think we've had a shot at some point, and that's about it. Deep line free kick from DK, though. Edgar... Oh, just misses. He's had a goal in the interim from a set piece. So he's off the mark for us. Second half, not really been all that shabby. They've had one shot on target this entire second half. We've had two, so it's not really been brilliant. And I forgot to take him off entirely there. We're going to bring Evers back on, even though neither are particularly brilliant penalty taken wise. Uh, we do need to get two. I don't know why I'm talking about penalties as if we're anywhere near getting those. But 2 0. Second half, not really a 2-0 game. Just curious. Uh, clear-cut chances. Oh, we had the better. Of course. One clear-cut, two half chances. Two clear-cut, three half chances. 2-0 to them. We have been fr Actually, we have been fractionally FM by them. Not massively so. Just a little bit. Can't fault you for one of those performances. One of those days. At least Edgar didn't pass it to one of their attackers this time. That happened in the game immediately afterwards, by the way. <laughs> the Sunderland match. He did it in the Sunderland match. One of their goals was from Edgar passing it to them again. Now, we won't, be bringing, we won't be bringing in the Bolton game, by the way, uh, just because partially we saw it Bolton very recently in last year's season, of course, and the return fixture is in March time, so it might be in the region where we want to sort of do an episode late in the season. So I'm not going to do that. Now, first things first, I just want to show you the games that we've won in... Rel no, the games that we've won relative to where those teams are right now. We are in fifth with 12 points, four wins, two losses. The two teams we've lost to, annoyingly, 16-17. Half 
half of their wins apiece. But the teams that we have beaten, Doncaster, Blackpool, Gillingham, and Noss County have gone up a little bit in 14th now. So, not brilliant. We have two, two players in the average rating now. That's quite good. That one there nearly loaned him as well before we got Sabara because, as you know, he was an option for Tech Midfielder left, sorry. Well, we got in Gardner Hickman as well. They wanted over £3,000 per week for him. I'm not paying that. Not breaking my current wage limit right now for a lone player, especially. So that's fine. But yeah, the teams that we've beaten all bottom half, in fact, we've, pretty much, we've only played bottom half teams so far. Next is Bolton. So great. Technically, we played Crew, but they were in the Carabao Cup. MK Dons, by the way, nicked two players I wanted to loan. They nicked him, Joe Hay, and the player I wanted. Actually, who was the other one with? Steve McLaren was in charge of them. Really puts his England spell into perspective, doesn't it, now? They loaned this uh, lad from Crystal Palace, who I really, really want as well. His wages were sensible, but he went to MK Dons, which is annoying. He's so good. I delayed Sabara until I knew if he was coming in or not. Sadly, he didn't come, so I ended up with Sabara. But I'm not too mad with Sabara, but another level. Another level. But the other thing in regards to Blackpool is I need to show you the stats. It may be a 4-0 away victory. It looks good on paper, doesn't it? That's the match. And in fairness, we have actually dominated basically every match in between. It looks even worse when I show you the match stats, by the way. 11 clear cut chances, 7 half chances. Four goals. Four goals from, I mean, if we literally count them as halves, 14 and a half chances. Not the greatest conversion rate. About 25%. It's 25% exactly of the shots on target, in fairness. But 1 in 4. Even the goalkeeper, goalkeeper ended up on a 7.1. That's how good we played in that match. But next time round, I suspect, actually, I'm going to aim towards that end of September because Lincoln, of course, my old local side. Team, of course, still very dear to my heart. So we will play those. And one of the games either side. I'm not outside of which one just yet. So Lincoln and either Forest Green at or Plymouth. Depends how much time I have in between to go through games, I suppose. A little bit into that factor. So until then... Not a disgraceful loss in the Cowboy Cup to Premier League Southampton, but it's a loss all the same. Until next time, ta -ra.